Hey guys, some of you might remember this basement renovation project where I turned my old tool room into my son's new basement bedroom. Now we always just kind of left the floor with a rug on it and just painted the floors, but I think it's time to add some value into this house as we're getting ready to sell and lay some laminate flooring. Now today I'm gonna to show you just how I do it. Stick around and we'll turn this from this to this. Okay, so we're about to get started and our first step is going to be getting all this furniture out of here as it's just going to be in our way. So there's two schools of thought when it comes to doing the edging around laminate flooring like this. Now one, you can go ahead and just leave everything as it is and install a piece of three quarter round around the outside to cover up your expansion gaps because you are going to have a little bit of space between the wall and the edge of your piece for expansion and contraction as you go through the summer, the humidity, all that, it's gonna move. Now the other thought in what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna take off all of my trim because my trim is actually relatively thick at the bottom as it is. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pry off all of my trim and as I pry it off, I'm gonna number them. Starting on this piece over here, then this piece, then this piece, this will be one, two, three, going around the room that way, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to that other side. Now, this will just help me for putting everything back because all these pieces are already cut to perfect size. I don't wanna mix anything up. So I'll just take a Sharpie, mark the number on the back, and it'll be easy to put everything back. Now, as I'm taking these off, there's gonna be nails stuck in the wall, stuck in your trim. I've just got these channel locks here and I found this the easy way to rip them out is just grab them by the bottom and then torque down like that, pulls it right out. So I've just taken the closet door off and now I need to remove this bottom bracket that supports the closet door as the floor is gonna be about 10 centimeters higher than it currently is. Now, I do have room for that in adjustability on the closet door, so that's not an issue. This will just get mounted higher after the floor is installed. We need to go ahead and cut off the bottom of this trim going around the door on this side and this side, and I'm just gonna use a piece of the laminate flipped over, so I'm using the side that doesn't show, and I'll use my vibrating multi-tool here to just cut that piece out. And again, we've got it flipped upside down because we don't wanna wreck the nice show side. I'll do the other side. So next up, we're gonna install our transition piece, which is gonna fill in the gap between the carpet and the laminate floor. Now these are both relatively the same height, so I'm using this piece, which has them at about the same height. You can get another piece that if it's a drop down to a lower level floor, you can also use that piece. Now these come in eight feet, and this one is about seven feet, I'm not quite sure why, but anyways, I already cut these down to fit right between our door jam. So in order to install this, I take this piece, place it here, and I'm going to drill with my hammer drill here and install a tap con here, here, and here, and that should be plenty enough secure to keep the transition piece in place. Now, as I'm installing this, I'm going to push my level up against it because this piece of plastic is prone to bending and flexing, and I want to make sure it's nice and straight all the way across. Now that I've got these three holes marked out and started, I can get my vacuum, suck out the dust, and drill these out. Holes are drilled, now the three tap cons to keep it in place. Now once we get our laminate started here, we can come back and do the transition and just hammer it into place. So the last thing that we're gonna do before we can actually start laying some laminate is we're gonna lay down the underlayment. Now this acts as a vapor barrier as well as a cushion. Now you can buy lots of different kinds. Some have the tape built into them and some are a little more fancy, super extra money. I don't really see a difference. It's just a little thin piece of foam really. So this one doesn't have the tape, so I'll go ahead and tape them together once I've got it laid down. And then just before that, I am going to vacuum the whole room, make sure there's no hidden pebbles or anything like that, because we don't want a princess and the pea kind of situation going on. So now we're on to the underlayment. You see I've got it in the corner there. That's because I'm gonna be starting in this corner, rolling it this way, then the next piece here and here. And those are nice, square, easy cuts. From there, the next horizontal pieces are gonna have a lot of funky cuts in them. It's not that hard, just lay it out, score it to the wall, and make sure you tape all these pieces together. Now let's hyperlapse our way through this and meet you back here.
So you see I've got my hodgepodge of underlayment laid out throughout the whole room, and I've got my first board here laid up against the side of the door jam. Now let's talk about the way I'm going to be laying this laminate. So the reason I'm starting from just outside the door jam and not in the other side of the room coming this way is I want to avoid any scenario where I end up with like a little strip of laminate at the very end. It's not going to look very good. This way we're left with about a two thirds strip right here at the door and that'll look just fine. Also, we're starting with a nice reference surface against the door jam here. So it'll keep everything nice and straight by the time we get to the other side. Now that being the other side of the room where there's going to be a bed, a dresser and all that, even if we're left like a little strip against that wall, no one will ever see it. Now for this first strip, you can tell there's the tongue, there's the groove, but the way laminate works is there's kind of like a little tongue on the groove side as well. And that's pushing out our first piece about an eighth of an inch. So I've marked right here where my door jam is, right here where my door jam is, and I'm going to cut off the sections on either side on my table saw. That'll make this first board press up nice against the door jam. After that on the table saw as well, we're going to rip our first strip, which is going to go up against our transition piece here, and we'll sneak that piece in and then we'll start working our way that way. Okay, we've got our first piece and our second piece here, and I've got the little groove piece cut off either side. So we'll just slide this guy in first. So the reason I've had to slide this in from this way and remove this strip is because this door jam is actually kind of on a trapezoidal angle here. So there's like a one degree angle on either side, so it wouldn't fit this way. And now our seams are nice and tight. And now our next piece. Oh. There we go, she's clicked in now. So because my tap cons stick up a little bit, I'm just gonna mark where they are and I'll just carve out a little bit with my bandsaw or the strip sander. You see I've made room for the tap cons in our three spots and I'm just gonna hammer this into place. There we go, transition from laminate to carpet. So to fill in the gap right here, I have this off cut piece from our first starter strip, which we ripped on the table saw. Now to measure and mark and cut for it, I'm just gonna place this up against the wall like this. We have about a quarter inch of spacing, that's for our expansion and contraction. Doesn't matter, that'll be hidden underneath our trim, so we'll never see that. And I just mark right here by eye, I can see the edge of the board down below, not off of the groove, but off of the top textured piece. So using the miter saw to cut this straight, now we're just gonna slide it in and smack it into place. So this is gonna be the next piece to go in our line here and you see you run into a bit of an issue. The trim is only gonna come to here and then there's the base of this old door trim which would have been sticking out further but the wall was built out. Ah, it's just kind of a mess. Now over here, I don't want to use one of those transition pieces. I don't think it's gonna look right. So what I really wanna do is have this piece just bang right up against here. And then on the other side, we'll have our expansion gap. So all these pieces right here will be butted right up against here. I think that's gonna look our best. So again, I'm gonna use my upside down piece and use my flush multi vibrating saw there and just cut away a bit of this trim and a little bit of this drywall. And that way this whole piece can just go flush right up against the wall. So now we need to mark this piece, do the same thing. I've got it flipped around so both my tongues are facing each other. Push it right near the wall, leaving a bit of a gap and mark where I need to cut it. And we'll slip this piece in here. And now we have to use my special bar for getting in here. Okay. okay, so the only reason we had to use this and that was so difficult is because this side was already wedged underneath the door trim right here. So we couldn't install it as a single piece and then slide it down. 
For this next piece, we'll cut this part to size. We'll attach them on the edge here, and then we'll slide both together. It should be flawlessly simple and easy. We won't need this bad boy again. Okay, so we'll attach the short side like that. And then we'll click them both in at the same time. Okay, so you can see this next full piece is going to have to start going around this corner part. I'll just mark right there. Take it up and do the same thing, mark this direction. So I've got my square marked. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out with my jigsaw. Okay, so we're now past all the crazy cuts and stuff other than just that one little one in that corner there. Now this is where the easy part begins and we can get away from using that kicker that you need to just bang the hell out of and get your last piece in. But to avoid doing that, what you do is you pre-assemble your whole strip, slide it in, and then you just have to hammer it forward. Or if you're lucky enough, it'll just slip right into place as you push down on it. Let me show you how we're gonna do that and then I'll just time lapse you through the rest of this room. With our three pieces joined together here, I'm just gonna pick them all up and just slide them in and press them down. And there we are, it's basically done except this last strip. Now, I'm sure you've noticed me going in and out of the door behind you there. That's up to my shop where I've been making all these cuts. I have the dust collection going non-stop for this entire process right here because you really don't wanna be starting and stopping a big motor like that all the time. It's not great for it. Now this last strip, all I'm gonna to have to do differently is rip it to width, cut it to length, the two end pieces. And then instead of this regular bumper I've been using down here, I'll have to use that hook one again and just slam in those last few pieces. Now, whatever leftover pieces I have, I'm gonna finish out the closet. It's a pretty deep closet there, so if it doesn't get all done, it doesn't get done. That way I don't have any extra pieces. Let's get to it. So same thing, I'm just pre-assembling it and then I'll just smack it into place. So you can see this is a fairly deep closet and you see I've got my piece already here with the two notches for the inside here and then right there I've got a bunch of strips ripped at 47 inches which those boards are only 47 and a half or 48 inches anyways so we don't have any extra pieces to do like a staggered look and who really cares it's the inside of a closet. So I'll just lay as many pieces as I have left over and as far as we go is as much as the closet's going to get. Well, as you guys can see, all the trim is placed back approximately where it needs to go thanks to my numbering system I put on the back of the trim. Now I'm just gonna reattach all the trim with these two inch V nails, and then after we'll fill all the holes with some white caulking. And there you have it with all the me nail holes covered up with that white caulking, the trim is looking good. I got the closet door reinstalled and this project is complete. Now I'd say it took me about four hours in total of working time to actually complete this project. So I'll leave you with a few finished shots, glamour shots if you will, and we'll see you on the next one. Damn, we're looking good.